I went um, uh, with a friend who was five or six years old and at some stage during the day, he was killed. He was run over by a train or a, on a track. And I came home and I told my mother that um, that this has happened. But uh, he said, I, I, I don't remember it. And the psychiatrist on the panel turned around and says, yeah, but you've been writing about it ever since. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. And the, those those moments when you're a child. Those yeah. And deep... uh, so he, he he was sort of not denying that in a way. And actually, when you look at Stand By Me, it's about a dead body on a track, if I remember correctly. You know, so, yes, so yeah. that, that incident in his life and also in his books, he talks about, you know, writing misery and <laughs> being miserable when he was writing it. And it, so it's all very personal. And uh, um, and, and yeah, so, in, you know, I think that that is. But at the same time, I, I, I came across another writer who basically made the same point and um, uh, her book wasn't picked up by anybody. So she created a backstory for the book that didn't exist. She said, oh, this is based on a, on a story that I read when, oh, really? It's real. Oh, yeah, it's real. And it wasn't. She she had to make <laughs> up the backstory yeah. in order yeah. to get Because I guess that's what writing is sometimes, it's very cliche, isn't it? Like, write what you know. But it, what, write what you know doesn't just mean, like, keep it to the realms of what you did. Because from what you know, there is a million different avenues, isn't there? Like, like you say, you know, in that cellar, the imagination goes wild. Yeah. That's that's writing what you know in the same way as the things that actually happened. And I guess being someone creative enough to come up with a backstory because you're under pressure to think of something, that's also writing what you know because that's yeah. what you're in the in the moment. <laughs> and it's and it's a business, and you 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 need to sell your book, and you need to sell your book to the publisher. Um, mm. And I, I'm not a, a, you know, I'm not a horror uh, aficionado at all. I, I, um, I, I watched a couple recently. Um, I watched um, Cocaine Bear, which is a oh, right, wow, well, yeah, yeah, great. <laughs> I, I loved it. It was so funny. Um, and I watched another one called Talk to Me about a hand. Yes, yes. Um, which I thought was good. And then I watched another one called Where Evil Lurks. That, about... that's one that i haven't seen it is on my list because it was so many people it was their film of last year like the, their absolute, very very the, the best horror film of the yeah it I've was very good, good for, about, so. for, for, for all sorts of reasons but what was interesting about all of them um they're all slightly mechanical in their construction because it's basically you've got to think of seven ways to kill somebody <laughs> and uh, and then <laughs> die in a you know an unpleasant way so um my story is basically seven ways of killing people um the best which, the best I, ones the best horror films are also from those ones that stay with you whether it's um something you know like sleepaway camp or um even even going back to kind of one of my favorites from the, the 70s um theater of blood you know oh, you think oh <laughs> what a brilliant <laughs> and and my story is basically the, I've stolen theater of blood it's a, it's oh. I would say that my story is a cross between lord of the flies and theater of blood right um, i'm sold i'm sold <laughs> <laughs> if only i had some money to invest in this well i i i have sent it to you know a big uh, a big uh, company from the far east actually but um because uh, oh. I only have one contact, a couple of contacts. I had, a, I did, I did a film called Eat Locals. Um, oh yes, that's, yeah, that's and, a horror film. Uh, I know the producer from that, so I've sent him the script, whether or not he's got a, had a chance to read it or whatever. And here's the thing about writing. Uh, you know, I sent it to him, and then then I had it proofread by some neighbours who didn't like it because it was too much blood and gore. And uh, uh, but there were loads of mistakes in it, and I then think, oh, you know, you. You, you writers make the same mistake that I make all the time is sending it out too early. And then, you know, a, a professional producer reads it and reads it and thinks, you know, this guy's put too many spelling mistakes in all fixable. Is, but, is, is that excitement? Do you think is that I the think reason it's excitement. you've, you've written mm. this thing and you want to share it. And that, actually you want, so a friend of mine who's a big horror fan, he stayed with me every weekend. He read the script. We went for a long walk and there was one thing he wasn't happy about. Um, and and I said, I don't really want to 
put an explanation in and he said no, it was fair enough and then the longer the walk went on the more i agreed with his what he said and i came home and i i wrote a couple of extra lines that right. just explained something because i said oh, the audience can work it out for themselves said, okay um but then <laughs> i then i realized he was right and i changed it and, and he's read yeah. all my stuff and he's always he's always very perceptive um so i always listen to so that's why you should send stuff out because yes. or get it read by friends and, and be be able to accept what you get back which i think um i i possibly find i fluctuate between finding that really hard to being really open to it i guess it just depends on what side of the bed i get out of but so, sometimes sometimes in the past certainly within teaching lots of observations and things like that you you, you do get used to it or beaten down by it but when it comes to sending writing in, which you, is very personal, at, at university, I was always able to accept it to a certain degree, but it would sometimes depend on who it was giving me the feedback. But <laughs> I think that's absolutely right. I mean, uh, I've had feedback on stuff and I, it was simply wrong. And mm. I was, it was, it was told arrogant. I was seemed to be arrogant because I wasn't listening. I said, no, it's simply wrong. And mm. I'm not going to change it. Um, I'll change those things, I think you know are wrong but i'm not going to change the fundamentals of it nice. uh, and i've had that a couple of times um but when my, you know when my friend adam reads it and he's a horror fan uh nice. he loves horror movies and you know he 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 knows his genre and mm. when we were doing the time travel stuff his favorite film is a thing called triangle so he made me sit down oh, and watch yeah. the thing called triangle um, and it's actually quite a good horror movie, you know, on a, on a time loop. And uh, and so we, Dick and I included it in our time travel book. And I'm glad I did because there wasn't that much horror in it. Well, well, I was going to say, because I, I guess the, the thing is, it, it, certainly with YouTube and things like that, you know, often the, the, the phrase is find your niche, find your niche. But but I what I find, I don't have a niche because... My brain doesn't work like that. And that's why I think Destination Time Travel really spoke to me. B because as I'm going through it, it, it's, it, it works like, I hope you take this as a compliment, it works like my brain works in going down a, a rabbit hole in the sense of I'm going, oh, there's Dr. Doctor Evil, Last Night in Soho, Family Guy, Red Dwarf, oh, philosophy. Um, and, and, you know, there's a through line and it makes sense, but it, it, it works at a speed that, I really enjoy. I felt like I was going down a rabbit hole as I was reading the book in a really exciting way because I was like, yeah, of course that's time travel too. And that is the philosophy of it, or whether it's talking about Donnie Darko or whether it's, you know, then going back and talking about, um, oh, let's say um, Hitchhiker's Guide. The, these are things that are, I found really fascinating because there were these touchstones that went through it. But it, you weren't limited by going, I'm only going to talk about horror or I'm only going to talk about science fiction or I'm only going to talk, you know, that for me is probably one of the most exciting parts about reading this book. But I'd imagine as a writer writing fiction, is it hard to kind of go, I'm writing a horror, I'm writing a science fiction, I'm writing this, I'm writing that, or do you put bits of everything in? Well, I think it was actually Dick Fiddy who basically said the great thing about time travel is it's invaded every single genre. Yes. And that was his point, really. He, you know, that, that, um, uh, that, that you can have time travel horror, you can have time travel comedy, you can have. And so the one thing that time travel has not invaded yet, if that's the right word, is literary fiction. With the exception mm. of Ian McEwan, which which we talk about, which I found by accident, but but it's very little literary fiction is is pretty is much. That every, fear, is that a fear of going outside of their niche and being classified as something that they that they think they might not be as successful in? Well, I think it's the the fact that time travel is essentially popularist and uh, mm. seen to be. Uh, it's not real. It's like the, it's like the attitude people have towards fantasy. You know, you mm. can't write fantasy literary fiction because, you know, fantasy is fantasy and literary fiction is what literary fiction is, whatever that is. And and actually, mm -hmm. again, you know, Stephen King talks about all that in the book because he does not like uh, borders that, that, that says, you know, that literary fiction is somehow better than automatically better than horror or whatever. He, yes, he And I yes. completely agree with that. I mean, I the, the the book came about not by accident exactly, but but when I was doing the Swidges book, the which 
number two, that's number one, but number two hopefully comes out soon, which has got more time travel in it. I sort of realized that what you had to do, I had to do was decide what all the rules were for the time travel mm -hmm. and how it was all going to happen. And the rules came after the story. So the story came first and then you develop your rules. And then I did, looked at, you know, well, you know, how did all the other stories work? What rules do they have? And I realized yes. they all fitted the story and, and the, there's an element of construction. So when you went down your rabbit hole, you can sort of see the mechanics behind Back to the Future, behind Doctor Who, behind Johnny Darko. You can see the the the, the construction. I don't think that's a bad thing. You know, we're, no. we're, we're not intending to you know ruin it for people by telling them the, you know what happened so much. It's the fact that just a little bit of a glimpse behind the curtain you know in the Wizard yeah of there's Ball. things so, there yeah. that that you want to go oh of course yeah. like oh, got, oh right yeah it's making right. the connections between things that apparently are so different but actually mm. they're dealing with this the, the same the same mechanisms if you yeah like. like you wouldn't think um you know from say austin powers dr evil and then you think about things like a christmas carol in the earlier chapters you know they, they couldn't be fur further apart and i think as well the, the fact that you do talk about the switches was a good way of me then reading the switches because <laughs> it, it, it added the well, that you was know, the publisher's all, idea. The publisher, the publisher basically <laughs> said, let's turn this in into a book and talk about Swidgers, and then hopefully people will, will buy this book, and then they'll also buy this one as well. So, Well, it worked. Um, it worked. <laughs> uh, it worked on this guy. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> but um, the, thing, the thing about that, though, is, is that when you're reading something, it's great that there's the research and all that kind of book, but to actually say, I put, I put this into practice, this is something that I... Have, have put in my own writing, I think gives it a, an added uh, level, uh, you know, an, an added depth that, that I found really interesting. And again, it did make me want to read read the switches. So, well, the, it, the, it's, the switches part oh, two is, has got uh, the, 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 is, has much more time travel in it. And um, w without, you know, going on about it too much, that, 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 that um, I had to, I, I wanted there not to be a time machine, but you know, to find a different way of doing it. So, um, but I got so confused um, with um, there's a red book, and I got so confused by this red book and and in which time place it was, and I basically had to get a sheet of paper and work out, you know, the different like timeline <laughs> timelines and where it was and how how this book could possibly have done what the book does in the story so great well, basically the, the, the william gets this blank book that's just empty there's nothing in it um but when time changes it then becomes full of writing and then i had mm -hmm. to explain that and i thought it was a nice plot twist uh, yes. it doesn't spoil it but it spoils it a bit but you know but then i had to work out all oh, you know where did he get the bloody book from when did he buy the bloody? and you, <laughs> you you had to sort of you know you could have got away with it with the maybe one line but i i i i, I like not that what terry pratchett used to say about doctor who he he never quite liked those one lines i think we quote him in the book where where it's all sorted out by oh that's a time fixed event yeah that's yeah it was all time -fixed time -fixed timey wimey <laughs> so it's all yeah yeah <laughs> you know, sometimes you need to so i i established very clear rules that um, must be quite tri tricky though because obviously as it becomes more into mainstream, like I'm thinking about the Avengers and explaining time travel, getting the piece of paper, putting the pencil through it. And then when I saw that in one of the Avengers films, I, I then saw it in about three or four other films. Um, you know, the way the same sort, whether it's drawing it on a chalkboard and then saying, well, time isn't like this, it's like this. And we put a pencil put, through it. Put it a, you know, they put it in a... a, a yeah, a, that must be quite tricky the... then to look at it in a way that is um, unique to the world you're creating. Well, I, I made it it's that, everywhere. That, that I made it that William is a is a not a normal Swidger. He's beyond the the normal Swidger people who are altering timelines very slightly. 